Hey, Pathfinders, our book has finally arrived. The Pathfinder's Journey is live on Amazon right now and ready for you. If you have already purchased our book and or left us a review, we thank you endlessly. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? The ebook sale of 99 cents won't last long, so head over to Amazon today to get your copy. Be sure to download the free 7-Day Reading Journal to make your journey even more worthwhile. Well, that's all for now. Check out the link in the show notes to get your copy of The Pathfinder's Journey today. Enjoy the show. These teammates that you surround yourself with might only be just a sounding board. Or maybe they're just someone that you catch up with once a month and you hear how much they're doing. And you may not take any of their advice, but their motivation motivates you. You got to surround yourself. Welcome to the On Purpose Investor Podcast with your host, Eric and Tiffany Vogel. We spent several hard years building a rental property portfolio so we could have more time with our family and live our ideal life. Finding your path can be difficult, so we're here to help guide you along the way with lessons, tips, and tricks to design and implement your dream life through real estate investing. Now sit back, turn up the volume, and get ready for this episode of the On Purpose Investor. What is up, Pathfinders, and welcome back to the On Purpose Investor podcast with your host, Eric. And Tiffany. Is this the new trend? You're just gonna... I don't even know how to describe the way you're saying your name. I kind of like it. It's like, hey, bro. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it rolling. Let's just do it. Lit. Litty. We need to down your caffeine and take a little bit. It's all good. I'm still <laughs> under 500 milligrams for right, the day. Right, right. But we, it all happened before 10 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> we were comparing Eric's caffeine intake to mine because with being pregnant, you can only have 200 milligrams, so... I've had to monitor, I wouldn't say cut back, but if we compared Eric's daily intake to a pregnant woman's, he's consuming enough to harm a baby. (laughs) The baby would be damaged. Yes. In some way. Or just be like Tweet from South Park. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You're so inappropriate. (laughs) Maybe that's why our kid's crazy. It might be. He gets caffeine through being around you. you. You exist an aura of caffeine. Can we get off the hating on Eric and get into this episode? (laughs) Sure. So this is episode (laughs) number 16. Today we're going to talk about building an intentional community and being very intentional about how we surround ourselves with people that think, talk, and walk, and breathe, and do the things that you want to be like. Before we get into that, there was a man... Well, he was a boy when it happened, but he grew up with wolves. And I'm going to read a little bit from TheGuardian.com. So his story is that he was abandoned as a child of seven in 1953, and he was left to fend for himself. Alone in the wild, as he tells it, he was raised by wolves who protected and sheltered him. With no one to talk to, he lost the use of language, began to bark, chirp, screech, and howl. Twelve years later, police found him in the mountains, wrapped in deer skin and with long, matted hair. This man... His name is Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja, thought he was a wolf. That was great pronunciation there. (laughs) I've been practicing. Yeah, your Spanish is getting better. (laughs) So he thought he was a wolf. Not because he read books and really liked being a wolf, but because he thought he was a wolf. He was surrounded by these wolves for... How many years? 12 years. Yeah, from the age of seven. So and, think- and that's a very, you know, important age where you're developing right. conversational skills. You're de- developing... It's second you know, graders, right? Yeah, social, social skills. Yeah. And he got all of his cues from wolves. That just really blows my mind that if you surround yourself by something or someone for long enough, and it is just you're immersed in it, that is all you know. Yeah. And if you apply that to... Any medium. If you want to be a rocket scientist, go to NASA, set up a tent, <laughs> camp out, and do all things rocket scientist. Right. Well, if you go think to school to be one. And... Trying to learn a language. The easiest way to learn a language is going where they speak it. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I took high school Spanish and we did a mission trip to Mexico. And I learned more in that week in Mexico than I did in two years of high school Spanish because I had little kids teaching me how to speak. Well, that was how they communicated. Cho- right. You don't you have a choice. You weren't reading out of a textbook. You right. were trying to find the bathroom. Yeah. And was it uh, baños? Yes. I but know then, I, then I started dreaming in Spanish, which was so crazy because yeah. you just you become so immersed in it that it's you eat, live, breathe, dream, everything. Whatever that thing is. I mean, you hear stories all the time, you know, 
parakeets that are in a house full of dogs start barking. Or cats that live with dogs their whole life have mannerisms of dogs and vice versa. Is that why our dog Maggie acts like a cat sometimes? She lived with a cat for about five years, so she sometimes has cat-like tendencies. She's got cat attitude, so... She's she's got (laughs) cat-attitude. All right, so we want to talk about how you can build that immersion for your mindset as you take on the path of becoming an investor and really building your dream life. Whether you decide to go through real estate investing in particular or you're just trying to find ways towards financial independence in your dream life, surrounding yourself with community can be, I think, the difference maker between success and failure. Right. And, you know, on Bigger Pockets, they always talk about why do you think people give up, give fail. up fail, or never get started? Yeah. And I think my answer to that question would be they never gave it enough energy, never invested 100% of themselves. And in order to give yourself 100% to real estate investing, my opinion of it would be you need to fully immerse. And some of the things that we did to begin immersing when we were starting out was listening to those podcasts, Mm -hmm. watching those webinars, reading those books. But we weren't meeting in person with people. We were listening to them. We were seeing them. We were reading from them or about them. And the only way we could take it that next step was to attend in-person meetings. Yeah. We were heavy into bigger pockets because it was the online resource at the time. It was free. Right. So we were heavy into podcasts. We were heavy into reading the forums and the webinars. And... We looked and found this local meetup about 45 minutes from us. It was in a suburb, which we liked. We didn't want to go to the big Atlanta meeting and be intimidated because of where we were. We just wanted what seemed to be a smaller meetup. And this guy that was... uh, listed on bigger pockets as one of the as the host for it was he was a pastor at my church so i was like hey i i kind of know him so i facebook stalked him sorry mike he has now (laughs) moved on to bigger and better things working with brandon and open door capital but it felt more comfortable for me because it was it was closer to home with people we were familiar with yes Yeah. yeah we didn't know him at the time but had heard of him i guess so right we show up to this meetup I get there before Eric because he was coming from school. I was coming from home. We meet up there, order our pancakes at the local IHOP. Mm -hmm. And we sat down, felt like we were drinking from a fire hose. For months, it seemed. And we would call each other on the way home and just word vomit. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? Like back and forth. But we were starting to get to know people. And when we had a deal come across our lap, we were able to ask around and find private money because our our initial private money source only had a certain amount of money available to lend. So we needed more money. So that's how we found money. And that group really launched us into our business. Yeah. So if you immerse yourself in a different country, in a different language, and you just sit around and listen. You're going to soak up some knowledge, but you're not going to get really good at, at talking and understanding and writing in that language unless you participate. You have to participate. So you have to start talking in that language. So when you go to these meetings, when you go to these meetups or, you know, you go to a seminar and there's a networking event, you have to participate if right. you want anything of, of worth to come out of it. You have to engage in conversation, right. even if you say the wrong thing. Can't tell you how many times I said something backwards or completely wrong to another investor and totally looked like a newbie, and I was, and they had to correct me or they didn't correct me and just thought I was an idiot. And that's okay because I was participating. Right. I mean, we would get there early, or I would, you couldn't because you were still at school. Right. But we'd get there early. And I'm an introvert. I do not like meeting new people. Once I get to know someone, then I'm fine with it. But it is extremely outside of my comfort zone to go sit at a table with a stranger and ask them a question. But I forced myself to. And at the end of the night, there's another networking time. And we stayed until the last minute. Even though we were exhausted and wanted to go home and sleep, we stayed. And we talked to people and we really put a lot of effort in. I just had a couple go-to questions for the introverts out there that aren't good at making small talk. You know, what do you do? What do you invest in? Was my first question. And you get people talking and then you say, you know, yep, I'm new here. This is my first time, second time, third time. And then they start asking you some questions and you can just take it from there. But just start somewhere. And I mean, Eric's an extrovert, so it's easy for him to have some of those conversations. Maybe not always easy, but... 
easier. But I would just challenge you, introvert, extrovert, don't let that hold you back. Really push yourself and invest. Like Eric said, you get out of it what you put into it. Right. And you don't have to necessarily know what you're talking about when you go to these meetings. You can have never listened to a single podcast other than this one because now... We have told you to just go to a meeting. Yeah. You can have not known a single thing about real estate investing and go find one of these meetups and go and sit in that room and soak it up, whatever they're talking about. They might be talking about options. They might talk about trailers or trailer parks. They just could be talking about where the market's heading in the next six months. You know, no matter what they're talking about, the fact is you're there. Right. You're, you're, you're putting initiative in. And, you know, over the past five years, we've seen people come and go. They show up one time or... They'll, they'll show up for a year and then stop. We've seen all different types of people come to these events. But the people that we see that are making big moves, the people that we see that are changing their lives through real estate investing are always there. Yeah. And some of them are introverts, some of them are extroverts. And it doesn't really matter about your personality type. It really matters is... Are you willing to put in the work? Right. Are and you, push yourself and your boundaries. Because all you got to ask them is, hey, what you been up to since I uh, last saw you? Right. And if they say, oh, not much. You know, if, if they're a go-getter and, and they're out there, they're going to entertain you with what they've been up right. to. Right. People and, like to talk about themselves. And sometimes it's very incredible what they've been, been up to. Yeah. If you talk to a person that's a wholesaler and they're a hustling wholesaler, they're probably going to say, I made 400 offers. I got 15 callbacks. I'm under contract on 10 houses. Yeah. They're like, what? And now you know that this person is someone that is making moves. And they might be a wholesaler for you. Right. You might find some houses off this person. Yeah. And you can ask them questions about how they found yeah. that many homes. I highly recommend you take notes because then you can go back over the next week or month or however long and review them as you learn more. Mm -hmm. Make notes of what you need to, to look into and research on your own. If you don't understand something, write it down and go Google it. There's I'm going to take this opportunity to say my biggest pet peeve in real estate investing world that I've seen in the past four or five years. Let me pick your brain. What that screams to me is that I am lazy and I want to get all of your information At for no free. Cost. Yep. I want all of your information and I want to learn from you and I don't want to do any of the work. Right. And so how do you say, let me pick your brain, let me get some of your knowledge, let me learn from you without being insulting by saying, let me pick your yeah. brain. And a lot of people don't say, let me pick your brain as an insult. Usually they're genuinely truly interested in what you're doing and want to know more about it and they value what you have to say but as the person giving the knowledge they don't owe you anything right really at the end of the day they may share with you some tips and tricks here and there but they have a secret sauce that is valuable to them that works for them and they're not going to want to be able to give it up unless you're worth giving it right. to. Well, I think that's the difference is how many people come up to us every month at the meeting and want information versus how many of them actually do something with it well yeah and, and i often tell people send us an email find, right. find us on social media and, and send us something i'd love to check out your rehab and see what you could do with it i'd love to see the rental properties you have in this bad part of town and see what we could do with it i'd love to help you right but i need you to reach out to me or the young fella that said i want to know more about what you do and I let them come right around with me one day when I'm doing some, some inspections on our properties and I say, man, you have a lot going for you. I'd, I'd love to see you enter a, a season of life of success in real estate investing, but I need you to read these three books. And when you read those three books, I want you to just tell me what you learned from yeah. them. And I never heard back. So I think all of that to say, if you want advice from an experienced investor, mm -hmm. listen to the advice and apply it. If they're giving it, I mean, if it's bad advice, don't take it and then acknowledge that you're not going to continue that relationship. But if it's someone that you aspire to be like, do what they say. I mean, three books was a pretty low barrier, yep. but this person couldn't find the time. I even to offered do. to buy him the books. Wow. <laughs> and then I think there's just a level of offering value. We worked our tails off for years to create this financial and time freedom. So we don't want to spend hours going and looking at someone's property, but we're willing to help by all means, but we just, we can't invest hours and hours into every person that wants help. So offer some kind of value, maybe come look at one of our properties and help us on a maintenance issue and then ask your questions, offer to help repair something, offer to 
to buy coffee even if you don't have a deal or anything you know offer offer something i wouldn't necessarily just go what do you need because i don't know what you have to offer that could help me right. but if you notice some issue on our website or something and you have good website mm-hmm. design skills right Offer to help me on my website, and for sure, I will give you whatever amount of time to help you. Or if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, oh, I could produce that better, let us know. Yeah. Send us something and, and, and help us produce it. Maybe we can help you achieve your dream life in some way. Right. You know, over the course of, of the years that we've been going to the meetup, we've been recognized as the young, hungry couple that literally does anything you tell them to do if they know it'll help them. Because we've had people tell us, hey, you should go do this. And before the next meeting, we've done it. Whether it's, we need to draw a vision, we need to do this, or we need to do that. We have been known as that young couple that we go and do things. Right. It was a reputation that helped us get free mentorships with people who are way further in their careers and really helped us launch our careers. So uh, with that, I want to go into the next thing we did after the meetup. We didn't go to any weekend seminars. We just decided to go for the whole shebang and go on a week-long cruise. And that was fun. It was (laughs) so fun. It was right before we got pregnant, so it was kind of like a last hurrah of drinking and partying a little bit. But we did not sleep much. We were in classrooms all morning, networking all afternoon. We would go to evening sessions then hang out. We had some friends there that we knew from our local meetup. And we really invested in any of those relationships that we could build. There was a couple that we met that we really connected with. We just happened to meet them in the hot tub and found out they were part of the group. And they became great friends of ours. So we... We were later in a mastermind with yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm an introvert. I would have loved to have gone back to the room after dinner and had some downtime to like... I had, to, I had plans to read books on this cruise. Because, you know, you're on a cruise. You're going to relax by the right. pool. That is not <laughs> what happened. We were... Hardcore conversations, asking questions the entire, every waking moment, basically. We took pages and pages of notes from the sessions and from the the pool sessions at the bar where we learned a ton too. And we built relationships that we have friends that we can call and ask questions and get that free mentorship because we invested. So I just recommend if you're going to go to a seminar, don't just go to the seminar. Stay late. Stay in the hotel. We're staying in, a, in about a month at the end of May, we're recording this at the end of April, so I'm going to a seminar that's 30 minutes from the house, but I'm staying in the hotel because I know I'm going to want to stay up late and get up early and, and network, and that's where we're going to build relationships in our business. So seminars or conferences, highly recommend investing in those and not just going for the class time, but for really building the community while you're there. Yeah. And just so you know, along the course of your journey, you're going to probably attend a lot of different seminars. You're going to go to a lot of different meetups. Make sure that, that you're presenting yourself in a professional way. There are some folks that we've seen either at seminars or at meetups or whatnot that, you know, they probably have all the best intentions and whatnot, but they're not really presenting themselves in, in the best light at times. And just know that people are always watching and people want to do business with people that are, you know, well-kept and can keep themselves composed in in situations. Yeah, so So. if you're having drinks, have some drinks, but don't don't overdo it. Right. And, I mean, in our community, you don't need to wear a suit and tie. It's No. You would be probably laughed at a little bit for taking it too seriously. But also don't, you know, show up in... Pajama pants. Pajama pants and and dirty. Just understand your your audience. Understand your community. And the reputation you want to build. And the reputation, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, for us, we are very big on integrity. And if we say we're going to do something, we do it. And if someone gives us advice, we take it. And if we don't take the advice, we we let them know, hey, here's why I didn't. Mm -hmm. We really thought about what you said and we took it to heart and we did some research. And here's why it doesn't fit for us. But we let them know, like, we, we heard you. And we appreciate your breath, your time in giving us that information. Just be appreciative, too, when you get advice from people. That's right. So why does it all matter? Why do all of these things about your community really matter? And I would say that it it matters so much because it is the determining factor to how you're going to travel in your journey. Your roadmap, which is what we call our vision. We call our vision our roadmap. Your roadmap is, you know, a three-year glimpse into the future of what you want your dream life to look like. And if you want to travel down 
your path. You're going to have to be surrounded by people that are going to help you get there. Either they're going to literally help you, or they're going to mentally help you, or they're going to be encouragement, you know, to keep you moving. But you've got to surround yourself with a team. These teammates that you surround yourself with might only be just a sounding board. Or maybe they're just someone that you catch up with once a month and you hear how much they're doing and you may not take any of their advice, but their motivation motivates you. You got to surround yourself. Right. I mean, if all of your, the people you're around are not investors, it's hard to get fired up. And I know for us, we really got our community built strong as we were doing other things than just our real estate business. And we were encouraged to focus on one thing. I think if we had not received that advice, we wouldn't be sitting where we are today. Yeah, I agree. I wrote an email this morning about if everything is important to you, then nothing is important. Right. It just means, you know, you don't have the capacity to focus on all of the things and right. let everything be the most important thing. One thing has to be the most important thing, and that's what you got to focus on. Right. And what your community can do is they can hold you accountable to that. Yeah. And, you know, what I see a lot in our circles now, so there's kind of stages of investing. You have beginners or people who are just starting out or have done one or two deals, wealth builders who are the ones who are growing their portfolios, and then you have enders. And our friends are in that end of the wealth builder stage, becoming mm-hmm. enders. And what we see a lot of the feedback is is to focus on the important things and make sure that you are living to your, your roadmap mm-hmm. and you worked your butt off to achieve these things. So now it's time to go live that life. So there's different stages of investing where you need different advice and accountability. So starting out when we were in our mastermind, like we were highly encouraged to really focus on finding deals and building our portfolio and building that foundation. And some of the advice we didn't take at the time because we were not emotionally in the spot to move forward with the advice. And we were ignorant to the benefits of it. Right. You know, we didn't know that for this $600 class, we're going to open up doors that will provide us the ability to make right. 6000 or six, yeah. 60000 We had a know. lot of fears holding us back at yeah. the time that I don't even know that we could have named it as a fear. Right. But well, I would I would call it, you know, abundance and scarcity. Scarcity. We well, we had a scarce mindset because we didn't realize the potential benefits. I think so we had a handyman business that we were running and it did not produce a lot of income. It provided a great income for our employees, mm-hmm. but we were not making enough to live on. And we were hesitant to do any flips because for me it was kind of the 2008 crisis of people having these flips that they're underwater and can't do anything with. And we knew rentals worked. So I was hesitant to do flips. And I know you were also. And I think had we not had that fear of flipping houses and had instead pursued that instead of the handyman business, we would have had a lot more time freedom at the time and we would have had a lot more income. So we would have invested less time and had more money. But it was a journey we had to go on. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that God sends us down paths for a reason. Yeah. I am certain that we went down the path of owning this company because of all the things we learned. Yeah. While we did not gain a lot of money throughout that time, we gained a lot of information. Right. We gained a lot of perspective yeah. on being a business owner in that sense and building relationships, choosing right. clients. Yeah. Choosing employees. We gained a lot of perspective on things that we are now utilizing and we are now able to put toward our other business right. in ways that we would have otherwise not known. Yeah. I think it really helped us with learning how to say no and that we have to focus because there was a period you were gone for a deployment and I was home by myself, pregnant with our son, working my full time job managing the rentals and running the handyman business. And I remember being on conference calls for my job and getting calls from clients and trying to just juggle all of that. It was too much. Along with air conditioners going out in the rentals. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. And you were unavailable because you were, you were deployed. I mean, and you know, that's one of those trials that I feel very convinced that God put you through that so that you could 
also teach me to give up some things. Right. And so you could teach me, we can do this, but you don't need to be doing it. Right. Do you know Wickman's book, Tractions, which is a, a book that I've been going through for a second time past couple of weeks. If everything's important, nothing's important. That mindset and mentality of it. There's a, a short anecdote he has in his book about this climber and he is climbing this mountain and he reaches and he falls. He's fallen off this cliff face and he grabs this vine and he's hanging on by this vine. While he's hanging there, he, he shouts up above to the sky, God, if you're up there, I need your help. And a booming voice comes down and yells back to the climber, if you trust me, let go. But he looked down and he was 600 foot above the ground and just knew that he's just going to die if he lets go. And the climber, instead of just realizing, oh my gosh, there's this booming voice coming out of the sky. That has to be God. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to let right. go. He said, well, is there anybody else up there? Like, is there anyone else to give a different kind of advice? It just puts it in perception of you have to trust and let go. And in some of the side businesses that, that I have going right now, I have to trust that I'm setting it up well enough that it can automate. Right. That I can train someone else to do the job and that it will get done. I have to learn how to let go and have faith. Right. Well, and you're building community in that sense of hiring people and trusting right. them. So it's a different kind of community, but it's nonetheless, you need people around you, whether they're helping you in your business, whether they're mentors, no matter the role. At the end of the day, community is everything. You can't do this all on your own. And I hope that Eric and I are part of your community through these podcasts. Our book will be coming out in a few months. So I hope we can help be a voice. And if you ever need anything or just want a sounding board from us, shoot us an email. Go to onpurposeinvestor.com. You can find both of our emails there. Uh, Eric or Tiffany at onpurposeinvestor.com. We'd love to be your sounding board to whatever you have going on. We can't promise a response time, but we can promise that we will get back. Yeah. If we had had a stronger network and community of people that we were checking in with weekly in that season of running the handyman business and you deployed and all of that, we probably would have made different decisions. Right, right. I agree with that. That was a little bit of a tangent, but all of that was to just say community is really everything to your success. It's the fuel to keep you going when things are hard. It's yeah, and just and a, a lot of people say, you know, I, I can't buy a house because I don't have money. Well, if you have a strong community, someone in that community has right, money. Right. And if you have found a good enough deal by listening to another community member, you learn from them and you went and found a great deal. Someone in the other part of your community has money. Right. And you can partner, you can, you can pair up, you can, you can figure out a way to do it. Yeah. And your community is going to dictate how successful you are. Right. And is it Jim Rome? Yes. Uh, that says you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time the with. The average. You're the, the average, sum. not the Let's sum. The What's math. the difference between average and the sum? I'm not a we're math not, person. We're not going into to that right <laughs> You're now. the average then. <laughs> yes. Oh, and the sum would be you are all five people yes. added together. Yes. Got it. You're the average. Yes. I, I want to say real quick, part of our community was each other. Mm -hmm. It made a lot of difference as we, because we grew in this together. So even if your spouse is, or partner, or whatever your, your situation is, even if your significant other is not fully on board and invested in the business, bring them in as much as you can because you need that partnership. Anyways, back to the average of the five people you surround <laughs> yourself with. I look back on the friends that I had in my early to mid-20s and our lifestyle was going out to eat, going out to the bar, hanging out, watching Netflix, playing games a lot of cards against humanity involved just hanging out we didn't really i mean we talked some deeper things like some politics or you know things we heard but it was not the kind of friendships we have now where we talk about our struggles and and deals and encourage each other my early to mid 20s i was acting like the people around me i was the average of my five closest friends and as we started getting into our investing, we, we surrounded ourselves with podcasts. So the things going into my head, yes, I was not friends with Josh and Brandon from Bigger Pockets, but I had them in my head constantly listening to them. So surrounding yourself with people who you want to be like. They were your community. Right. And they still are. Yeah. They don't even know it. <laughs> it feels a little creepy, to be honest. We've listened to so many hours of Brandon, Josh, David, 
And not just that podcast. There's and, you plenty know, of others, but the Rich Dad Radio Show. You listen yes. to a lot of Kiyosaki. Yeah, Chad Carson. There's there's a lot out there. There's a lot of great podcasts out there. But yeah, I'm I'm on the Tim Ferriss train. Okay, I, I enjoy his podcast. Yeah, there is a lot of podcasts out there that that you can absorb knowledge in and right. make them part of your community, even if you don't see them in person. Right. But don't stop there. Yeah. Build your local network. Also, mm-hmm. the people you and the the thoughts and the things you surround yourself, the things you immerse yourself in are going to be the key to your success. Go to a meetup, find some people that you feel like you could get along with and hang out with and set up a a Saturday breakfast club yeah. or a Sunday brunch club or find a way to force friendships to happen. Right. And it might sound silly and it might sound like oh, I don't want to have to, you know, force a friendship. You have to be I think, intentional. I think you have to be very intentional about making sure that you are surrounded. Right. Because e- even if you're an introvert, you know, you can form a Facebook group mm-hmm. and you can tag people on it and you can invite people to it without ever having to reach out to them and talk on the phone or whatnot. I feel like but you're talking to me right now. You do have to <laughs> ultimately go see them in person. Just know that that is the comfort bubble that you're yeah. in dire needs of popping. And to break through that, you got to find people that you're comfortable around. And the people that you're comfortable around are going to be people that you enjoy talking to. And to make it an enjoyable conversation, find something you enjoy talking about. Yeah. And if your dream life is through real estate investing and, and your roadmap has this along your journey, then you're going to have to pop that bubble Yeah. <laughs> and get out there and do it. Well, I think for us, like our minds and our thoughts really shifted while we were both working our jobs. We started seeing the world very differently. Our friends that we had at work didn't align with where we wanted to be. And that's when we realized we needed to expand our network into the world we wanted to be a part of. And this summer, we're going to take a little over a week to go RVing with a bunch of friends who are in real estate and have their RVs. And that's a network where it's not just real estate friends, but it's also RVer friends. So we get to look at everyone's rig and aspire to have the next bigger and better rig. Well, you know, just to put it in perspective, Tiffany and I have not the smallest RV, but definitely the most cost effective effective for our our journey. Yes. <laughs> We're at a different stage. We're yes. younger than everyone else in the group. We're... We're probably 15 years younger than the next oldest person. Uh, 10 to 15 years. Yeah. I mean, unless Dan shows up. Yeah. <laughs> he will not. You don't think so? They're having a baby. Oh, that's right. Like, you just forgot that. I kind of wanted to just announce that my best friend's having a baby. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Find the niche within real estate that reaches out to you also. Like, I hosted a meetup for women in real estate. And it's been really great for us to get together. And and sometimes we talk about our kids and the crazy things they're doing. It's not all real estate focused, but we all have common interests. And get together once a month, and it's just a nice little hangout. So find what works for you. But really think about... Who are the five people that surround you? And are they where you currently are? Are they where you want to be? Are they helping you reach your goals? And if they're not who you are currently are or who you want to be, then they are probably who you want to forget about. Yeah. The average of those five people is the person you're trying to leave behind. Right. Well, and it's not necessarily you have to leave them behind. Well, the person that they are is the person they want to leave behind. They don't want to be that version of themselves anymore. Yeah, I mean... They want to be a different version of themselves, but they can keep those friends, but they don't need to spend the most time with those people. especially as you're growing. Right. I know when we were early on in our career, a lot of our relationships were kind of put on pause between family and friends. And as we have more time now, because we're not working on our houses, if you go back and listen to the last episode, we talk about how we lived and breathed our first rental renovation. Mm Mm-hmm. We didn't have time for them, but now we do. So we're investing in those relationships again, but with the understanding that we still have our network Mm -hmm. who's going to push us. So find that balance. But as you're growing, really invest in the relationships that are going to help you reach your goals. Absolutely. And be intentional. Yeah, that's key. And, you know, friendships are hard. Relationships are hard. And not because it's difficult to get along with people. That's because people all have different lives and people all have different schedules. And priorities. And different priorities. Yeah. And if you want friendships that matter to you to last, then you have to put in some work. Right. You have to reach out. If they're the kind of person that 
is okay going a couple weeks without talking. And when you hit them back up, they're like, hey, been on time. You know, here's what's happened in my life. Here's what's happened in my life. And you catch up. That's fine. But there are also people that, you know, get offended if you don't reach out. There are also people that you, you text them and they don't respond. And there's a lot of different factors that go into relationship building. And you have to be extremely intentional. So if you want a relationship to happen, a friendship to happen, a mentorship to happen, you have to be extremely intentional and, and go out of your way to make it happen. And offer value when offer you can. Offer value. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well, thanks y'all for hanging out with us and listening to us talk about the value of community and how to build an intentional community. What lessons can you take and apply to your life? Don't let the time you just invested go to waste. You only get one life, so live it purposefully. That's all we have for you today. See you next time. Are you ready to discover and build your dream life? Then it's time to become a Pathfinder. Head over to onpurposeinvestor.com and sign up for our newsletter to get tips and tricks to help you find your path and get the latest from our blog. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate an honest review on your favorite podcast app. If you're enjoying this show, share it with friends, family, and fellow investors. See you next time at the On